Before we get started, please consider lightly clicking on that like button and subscribing to my channel. I worked hard on this video and I would really appreciate it. If this video gets 20 likes, I'll make a part 2 with the stories of the last half of Dahmer's victims. The 10-part miniseries, Monster, the Jeffrey Dahmer story, that landed on Netflix on September 21st, features a number of moments pulled from the original reports about the horrific murders perpetrated by Dahmer over several years, and discovered as Dahmer began testifying in court, in July 1991. In this video, we'll be exploring the gruesome details of Jeffrey Dahmer's first seven victims in this decades-long murder spree. When teenager Stephen Hicks, of Coventry Township, Ohio, didn't come home one night in June 1978, his parents figured he had simply stayed out late. But as the days passed with no sign of the young man, his family grew increasingly worried. He never came home. Hicks' parents finally learned the truth about their 18-year-old son's disappearance 13 years later. Dahmer told investigators he saw Hicks hitchhiking and brought him back to the Dahmer family home. When Hicks tried to leave, Dahmer told investigators he struck Hicks with a barbell, strangled him and then cut up his body. He later spattered Hicks's bones around the yard. Dahmer kept the skull, which he used as a stimulus for masturbation. According to Dahmer, Hicks was the first of 17 men he killed, dismembered and, in some instances, cannibalized and engaged in sex acts with their corpses. But after killing Hicks in 1978, Dahmer waited nearly a decade before murdering his next victim. Following his resignation from his position as a server at a restaurant in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, Stephen Twomey went missing on September 15, 1987. He met Jeffrey at a bar and the pair quickly became intimate friends. Jeffrey did not feel comfortable bringing Stephen to his home because he was living with his grandmother at the time. The two opted to spend the night in a room at the Ambassador Hotel in Milwaukee. Once in the motel, the serial killer began drugging his partner out of desperation to keep him under control. According to Dahmer, he only wanted to drug Twomey and saw him while he was still alive. Yet, when he awoke the following day, he found his victim lying underneath him with his chest caved in. Additionally, there were bruises all over Stephen's body, and blood was dripping from the corners of his mouth. The serial killer later insisted that he had no recollection of killing Stephen, yet he knew he had to dispose of the body. Hence, he packed his victim's body in a large suitcase and carried it to his grandmother's house before dismembering him and dissolving his flesh in acid. Stephen was 25 when he died and his body was never found. After committing the heinous act of murdering Twomey, Dahmer went hunting for other victims, however, it took him another three months to find his third victim. In January of 1988, Jeffrey Dahmer came into contact with James Dockstader outside a gay bar in Wisconsin. The murderer lured Dockstader to his grandmother's house in West Allis, where he murdered him by strangling and storing his body in the basement. He was a 14-year-old male prostitute who was lured to his house for $50. Jeffrey boiled and bleached his skull, dismembered Dockstader's body, and disposed of his remains with the trash. He pulverized the boy's skull two weeks later. There was never any trace of the remains found. Richard Guerrero was Dahmer's fourth victim. Guerrero was last seen leaving his family's Northside home for a friend's house in Milwaukee, Wisconsin on March 24, 1988 with $3 in his pocket and no wallet. He never made it to the friend's house, and he never came back. Four months after their son disappeared, the Guerreros hired a private investigator to search for him. The investigator called off the search when he ran into nothing but dead ends. Authorities believe that Guerrero met Jeffrey Dahmer sometime during the evening and returned to Dahmer's residence in West Allis, Wisconsin with him. Guerrero may have agreed to pose for photos for Dahmer during the evening as a way to make extra cash. He was drugged and strangled after he had performed sexual favors for Dahmer. It is believed Dahmer dismembered Guerrero and destroyed his remains, making it unlikely they will be found. Anthony Sears was born on January 28, 1965. He was brutally murdered by Jeffrey Dahmer on March 25, 1989. He was 24 years old at the time and an aspiring model. Sears was Dahmer's fifth victim and the first victim whose body parts were retained. Dahmer lured Sears to his grandmother's residence where they had oral sex before Dahmer strangled Sears. Dahmer decapitated Sears' dead body before attempting to flay the corpse. He stripped the flesh and got rid of the bones in the waist. Dahmer kept Sears' head and private parts as a memento. Sears' remains were recovered by the police upon Dahmer's arrest in 1991. 
Raymond Lamont Smith who was also known as Ricky Beeks was born in 1957. He was killed by Jeffrey Dahmer on May 20, 1990. Raymond Smith was a sex worker. He was 32 years old at the time of his death. By this time, Dahmer has left his grandmother's house and moved to apartment 213 on 924 North 25th Street. Raymond Lamont Smith was the first victim Dahmer killed in apartment 213. Smith was lured by Dahmer's offer of $50 for sex. Dahmer laced the drink he offered Smith with sleeping drugs and then strangled him to death. Dahmer took pictures of Smith's body in sexual positions before dismembering him. Dahmer boiled Smith's legs, arms and pelvis before rinsing them. He then dissolved the skeleton in acid, keeping the skull with Sears skull. Edward Warren was Dahmer's seventh victim. Smith was last seen leaving the Phoenix Bar in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, during the evening of June 14, 1990. It is believed that Smith met Jeffrey Dahmer sometime during the evening, at a party, and returned to Dahmer's residence in West Allis, with him. Smith was drugged, beaten, strangled and dismembered. Dahmer used parts of his bones as jewelry and the rest of his body was submerged and dissolved in acid. Dahmer wanted to keep his skull as a trophy and placed it in the oven to dry it out. Oddly enough, the skull exploded in the oven, ruining his plans. I don't want to lose your attention, so I'm going to stop the video here. Be sure to like this video, and if enough people enjoyed it, I'll do a part 2 with the remaining stories of how Dahmer's victims met their demise. I appreciate you watching and I appreciate your support. I hope to see you again soon.